What's going on, Imperials? It's Emperor Cubone here. Some people say that there shouldn't be any Pokémon without evolutions, but I disagree. Evolving doesn't make something a Pokémon, and sometimes a solitary creature can embody a concept or idea perfectly enough on its own, and adding anything more would just overcomplicate it. However, at the same time, there are some Pokémon that need to be a part of something bigger and are just left out in the cold. So let's look at some one-off Pokémon and separate the good from the bad. I have done this topic before, so I'll try to avoid any of those same entries, and more importantly, some of the ones that I pointed to aren't even eligible anymore, so consider this a challenge as well, as I hope that some of these might get crossed off in the future. So, here are more of the top 6 best, and worst, single stage Pokémon. Number 6 Worst, Cryogonal. Speaking of out in the cold, this jagged snowflake is way down the list for most people, and for good reason. First of all, it's just kind of hard to look at, not being endearing in the slightest, just barely letting you make out a face in that pointed mess. But I don't just want to insult their looks, because they also play boring to boot. Cryogonal is a pure ice type, which used to be a rarity in the first four generations, but unfortunately it debuted in Unova, a region filled with pure ice. So you could either get outgunned by a detested ice cream cone, or try to convince little kids to use you over the adorable polar bear. Sure, Cryogonal has decent speed and special defense, but ice is notoriously frail, so you're still gonna melt to most fire attacks, and then that leaves this frozen freak open to all of its other weaknesses with a pitiful 50 in defense. Not to mention it's stuck with only Levitate, while its competition can have three different abilities apiece. Other pure ice types at least have some character about them, but Cryogonal's blank face offers nothing to relate to. Let me put it this way, I went through every ice type I could find in my decks to try and unlock Regice in the Crown Tundra before I had to look it up and realized that Cryogonal was in the game and that I had already caught one. That's how forgettable this thing is. Number 6 Best, Wishy Washy. This one might be questionable to some people, because after all, Wishy Washy is one of the weakest Pokémon ever made, right? But it's also got a pretty perfect gimmick that's kind of astounding they didn't think of it sooner. While puny and weak on their own, Wishy Washy is capable of banding together in a school to form one massive imposing figure operating as one in the form of a giant fish. Not only is this visually impressive, but it seriously buffs their stats, letting this Pokémon become a powerhouse. And honestly, it's impressive how much publicity it's gotten for being such a recent Pokémon. But it was one of the totem Pokémon to face in Alola, and it was one of the five Illumina Pokémon in Snap, being by far the newest as the only entry to hail from a 3D-era game. Sure, all of its majesty and power disappear when you take too much damage and all of your friends abandon you, but that's why it's so low on the list. However, Wishy Washy is a fun idea brought to life in a brilliant way, and I hope that they keep giving it favorable treatment for a long time to come. Number 5 Worst, Veluza. But while we're in the water, let's see about Veluza. Now, I don't hate this Pokémon, so if you like it, you can put the claws away, but to me, it's just a victim of poor circumstances. See, Generation 9 brought in quite a few single-stage Pokémon, which kind of makes Veluza get lost in the shuffle, especially since it's pretty far away from the starting point. But there are other single-stage water types that are hyped up way more by having a symbiotic relationship with each other and being made a Titan and even other one-offs that aren't water-type, but still are related to the water. And Veluza has got like a gimmick where it lets chunks of its flesh fall off? However, there's no in-game correlation to this. No ability or stat changes that arise whatsoever, so it's just got a weird nasty habit for no reason. It just seems like a poor man's Barrascuta being slower and weaker, and you can still find that Galar Arrowfish in the Paldea region. So maybe you love Veluza, but you've got to admit that it's a bit overshadowed and probably would have been better off if they waited to put it in the next generation. However, number 5 best, Cloth. Not all Paldea one-offs are so bad. Many people may look at Cloth and scratch their head, but I have one question for you. Have you used one? It may look goofy, but that's part of its charm, and it uses that facade to lull you into letting down your guard so that it can ram its giant stone pincers into your heart. It's strong and sturdy, and is surprisingly fast for a defensive rock type. Sure, 75 isn't breaking the sound barrier, but let me put it this way. That outspeeds every single rock type that was made in Gens 2 through 4, with the exception of Anorith who merely ties it. 
so cloth will shock people for how quickly it can swing its muscle around, and with it being the most common first titan that you'll find in Scarlet and Violet, it's already got a good agent, clearly, so I look forward to seeing what more they'll give it in the future. Because this buff crab with its simple but distinguishing design has already shot up to the top as one of my favorite single stages to date, so I hope that it can stay in their good graces for a while yet. Number 4 Worst, Bruxish. Alola added a surprising amount of one-offs for such a small region, but one of the worst was instantly agreed upon to be Bruxish. Listen, we have no shortage of water Pokémon even in this very region, and especially fish water Pokémon. So I can appreciate that they wanted to make it different, but they went in a totally wrong direction, making it so displeasing to look at from just about every angle. And I promise I'm not just hating on water psychic types because there are some that I love, but Bruxish has a much higher physical attack when it doesn't even learn a physical psychic move until level 41. And even then, it's a biting move that makes you want to use the Strongjaw ability, which would totally throw out its shiny new signature ability of Dazzling. So this thing is just a mess in terms of execution and design. Alright, I don't have much more effort to devote to this disappointment with the weird teeth. Number 4 Best, Tropius. Last time I debated between Torkoal and this one, so now is the time for this flying plant dinosaur to shine. I'll be up front, grass and flying isn't the greatest type combination, but hey, on paper, neither is rock and dark. But at least Tropius has access to reliable recovery moves to help it out. And even though battle competitions are not the only important thing, having a Dragon Dance or two to power up your stab and your coverage moves is going to help out a lot, at least in sweeping the final two gyms in the Hoenn region. But speaking of its home region, Tropius can learn half of the HMs that you'll need in your journey. So even if you don't respect it in battle, it can be your trusted steed to get you where you need to go. Not every Pokémon is supposed to be a phenomenal fighter, but if you have the majesty of a Brachiosaurus with wings, you're gonna stand out, especially over the weaklings that had this type combo before you, giving Grass and Flying a much better name when it's on a behemoth of a dinosaur tree. Number 3 Worst, Sock and Throw. Since it turns out that Chingling apparently actually evolves into Chimeco, I'll put the Unova fighting Pokémon here. Sorry, I should be more specific since Gen 5 gave us a ton of fighting Pokémon, they're not even the only human-like fighting types here, which makes these Pokémon even more superfluous. You might not care about humanoid Pokémon, but they really push the bounds of believability when they just wear regular clothing. What exactly is happening here? These Pokémon are so transparently trying to copy the Hitmons from Gen 1, with them not actually being related, but they lack any of the charm or defining differences, when at most this should have been one Pokémon? But no, I guess they needed more version exclusives. Now, I won't deny that these Pokémon can hit hard, and if you want to use them, then you're allowed to, I guess, but even amongst pure fighting types, there are so many other options, not to mention dual types that you could use for better coverage. Coverage. So why would any kid want to pick Karate Joe over here with his ugly face and plain old clothes that they could find at their local dojo when they've got actual magical monsters to capture their imagination? Number 3 Best, Tauros. The first generation has been around for so long that many Pokémon that began as a single stage have since had that status taken away, but Tauros has remained by itself all these years later and is still amazing. You may try and say that it's got others that are close enough, but it's still technically a one-off, even with having three new regional forms, it's all still the same Pokémon. So what makes Tauros so great anyway? Well, in Gen 1, it was one of the strongest Pokémon to exist, being a fast physical normal type, and a lot has changed since those early days, but Tauros can still be valuable with its possible abilities and huge move pool of coverage that normal types can abuse. But of course, that's just the regular, the new Paldean form has given it a renewed life as well, or should I say forms, because both the fire and water type variants are currently top contenders for competitive players. If it were up to me, we would get a Tauros of every type eventually, but this battling bovine can still charge with the best of them. And now it finally makes sense why Ash would catch so many of them at once. Number 2 Worst, Delivered. Look, I don't want to spend too long on this one, I have talked about deliberate shortcomings plenty of times before. It is a weak ice type found way too late to matter that only had one terrible attack for decades, so that's just a recipe for disaster, no matter which beloved holiday you use to try to sway people. 
The real reason I'm putting this Santa Penguin here is because it's all but lost any hope of being redeemed, with Generation 9 creating a paradox form of this Pokémon. Instead of an evolution or a regional variant, Delibird got cut off because these Paradox Pokémon are not connected mechanically in the game to any of the Pokémon that they have a clear resemblance to, which leaves the poor Gen 2 Icebird in the dust. We might have had some ideas on how to help Delibird in the past, but they're pretty much all for naught now, locking it in as one of the worst stagnant Pokémon to exist in the series. Number 2 Best, Spiritomb. I'll be honest, I don't even always like Spiritomb all that much, but I can't deny its power. Obviously, its typing is of note, being dark and ghost, however, it wasn't even the first one since Sableye debuted before it. So what made Spiritomb so special? Well, the 100 extra points in its base stats are a good start, but its typing naturally takes its bulky defenses and cranks them up by having no weaknesses to speak of. They had to invent Fairy just to make it weak to something, so when the absolute best that any foe could do was neutral damage, it makes Spiritomb a favorite for anyone wanting a wall, including the champion of its home region. This near-immortal stature and the ludicrous methods of procurement that it had in Gen 4, let alone in the Sui region does kind of make me groan when I have to come across it, and personally I think its design is maybe a little try-hard, hot topic sort of thing, but hey, people clearly seem to love that. But Spiritomb has an almost urban legend status about it being rarer than even some mythicals, so I think it's fair to say that Spiritomb stands tall all on its own even when trapped in the Keystone. Number 1 Worst, Carbank. Again, I don't want to punch down on these forgotten and left-behind Pokémon, but at some point, you just gotta call a spade a spade. It's truly impressive how forgotten Carbink is being in Kalos with so few new Pokémon. But when you can only be found in one spot, the Reflection Cave, and you're on the lower end of potential encounters there, it's no wonder that this bejeweled Beyblade gets overshadowed. Even if you did bother to catch one and tried it out, are you really going to keep it on your team until the League when it never evolves and stays a weird lump forever? It doesn't even help with the next fighting gym because it can't learn a single fairy type move until level 50. I honestly feel like it's only fairy type because that was the new toy for Gen 6, but they forgot to make enough dual types for it so they just slapped it on Carbank for no reason. Not to mention the fact that they never even used the different forms that they designed in any of the games, leaving the only thing Carbink can have to be a tenuous connection to Diancie, but as much as it can wish all at once that it was actually related, there is no way for Carbink to ever change, which is a huge shame for this half-baked Pokémon that will feel unfinished for the rest of time. Number 1 Best, Aerodactyl. Like Tauros, very few Gen 1 Pokémon stand alone, but Aerodactyl has been able to thrive in its solo status. It was an interesting choice to have an option between fossils to resurrect, sort of like a starter, but that was not the extent of prehistoric Pokémon that you could revive, because if you return to the museum, you can find the Old Amber. That item is amazing on its own as a clear reference to one of the greatest stories ever told, Jurassic Park, but Aerodactyl is not let down by being put on such a prestigious pedestal, it only helps it soar higher. Am I biased because pterodactyls are my favorite dinosaur? Perhaps, but try and say that to Aerodactyl's rows of razor-sharp teeth. While I could praise its design all day, it's actually good in battle as well, being blisteringly fast. Like, in the top 20-something fastest Pokémon of all time. Not to mention its huge attack that it can launch before you even blink hitting you with 100 base power moves like Giga Impact or Stone Edge. Now, Aerodactyl was lucky enough to get a Mega Evolution, which made it even more of a terror. However, Megas are no longer available, so the best possible claim that anyone could say Aerodactyl had to not being a single stage has been revoked. Well, unless you believe that Zubat relative theory, but it still comes out in a pretty great spot. Even with every single other fossil Pokémon having super effective coverage against Aerodactyl, I'm willing to bet that it was still a dominant player back then, in ruling the skies all those thousands of years ago. And honestly, I find it hard to believe that it ever went extinct in the first place. So, I'm pretty sure that there's a concentration of them still living out there somewhere, and we're just lucky that they're staying to themselves, instead of reigning over us with an iron fist, or rather, should I say, a stone wing. So, those are more of the top 6 best, and worst, single-stage Pokémon. 
Hopefully we've given them enough ideas on who to show attention to next time. What do you think of single stage Pokemon? Let me know down in the comments. Also be sure to leave a like, share this video, and subscribe so that you too can become an Imperial today. And until next time, stay grounded.